This is Miles with Best Practice Medicine. In today's video, we're going to be showing you how to immobilize a patient using a long spine board from a supine position. Spinal immobilization using a long spine board is used to fully immobilize a patient's body if suspicion or indication of spinal injury is present, or if there's a sufficiently high mechanism of injury to indicate a high index of suspicion of trauma to the head, neck, or spine. It's also used for certain multi-system trauma patients and for extrication purposes. As more evidence is done, practices nationwide regarding spinal immobilization are changing. However, it's still an important tool for EMS professionals in some situations. Stay tuned for an upcoming video on the latest research informing good clinical decision making when taking spinal precautions. Spinal immobilization is one of the skills you'll need to demonstrate in order to obtain licensure as an EMT. The steps are outlined in the spinal immobilization skill sheet. The overall structure is very similar to any splinting intervention, starting with BSI seen safe, manual stabilization of the injured extremity, and assessment of CSMs. Manual stabilization for spinal immobilization includes placing your patient's head in a neutral, inline position and maintaining that position with manual stabilization, and then place an appropriately sized cervical collar to help stabilize the patient's neck. Position the immobilization device next to the patient and direct movement of the patient onto the immobilization device without compromising the integrity of the spine, moving the patient's whole body as a unit. Assess and apply padding as necessary to any void underneath the patient's back or knees. A foam pad or cravats can be used to pad behind the patient's head and to fill any voids underneath the patient. Immobilize the patient's torso to the device using the straps included in your backboard kit. Different services use different styles of straps. Be sure to take time to familiarize yourself with the equipment you'll be using. When log rolling your patient or any other time you're moving your patient, moves are directed by the person holding C-spine. After immobilizing the patient's torso to the device, assess for padding behind the patient's head and secure the patient's head using foam blocks or towel rolls and taping twice over the chin and forehead. It's worthy to note that the skill sheet jumps around a little bit in order of certain steps. It says to immobilize the legs after the head, but normally in practice, the legs are immobilized in the same step as immobilizing the torso, and that's okay. Once the patient is fully immobilized to the long spine board, manual stabilization of the head can be discontinued. Immobilize the patient's arms to the device using either tape or cravat, and finally, reassess distal CSMs. Now, we'll give you a demonstration of the whole process. After taking appropriate body substance isolation precautions and determining your scene is safe, direct your assistant to place the patient's head in a neutral inline position and maintain manual stabilization throughout the process of backboarding. Reassess the patient's distal circulation, sensation, and motion by checking pulses. What finger am I touching? Index. What finger? Thumb. Squeeze both. What toe am I touching? Big toe. What toe? Pinky. Wiggle them for me. Distal pulse is intact. Then apply an appropriately sized cervical collar. Different styles C collar exist. They'll all have a mechanism to unlock, adjust size as needed. and lock back in place. Is that okay? Okay. Mm -hmm. Position the immobilization device next to your patient and then direct the movement of the patient onto the long spine board. We're gonna roll you. We're gonna put your arm all the way up here above your head. I got shoulder and hip. Heads count. Is anybody not ready? One, two, three. <clears throat> Any 
Anybody not ready? One, two, three. Make sure your patient's properly centered and positioned on the board. We're gonna slide towards the patient's feet and center her. Man, can you get the other hip? Okay. One, two, three. Back towards her head. One, two, three. Looks good. We're gonna assess and pad for any voids underneath the patient. No voids. Put your arms at your sides for a second. When placing the straps, locate the center of the shoulder straps at the patient's sternum, and make sure to put the straps over the patient's structures you wish to support, including the thoracic area or ribs, pelvis, mid-thigh, and lower legs. Always secure the patient's body to the board before securing the head. Justin, I'm going to slide these pads on over your hands. I'll take over manual stabilization while you move your hands out. Okay, can you take back over? I have to sit position. Back on you. Can we lift up to your knees? Absolutely. Okay. Your count. One, two, three. Back down on your count. One, two, three. Okay. Finally, we'll reassess the patient's distal CSMs. Squeeze both my hands. What finger am I touching? Index. What finger? Thumb. What toe? Mm -hmm. What toe? Will your toes for me? Great. We hope you enjoyed this video on supine spinal immobilization. Also check out our video on spinal immobilization of a patient in a seated position using a vest style extrication device. Thanks for watching BPM TV. See you next time.